Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is video number three of our series of videos in, uh, about packaging. Uh, in the first two videos we talked about uh, packaging, traditional packaging technology and the supply chain and how it affects packaging. So if you haven't watched those, I highly encourage you to watch those before you watch this. Uh, but if you just want to learn about the interposer, thanks for joining me today and uh, let's just get right on it. So uh, what is an interposer? Um, you'll see that here we refer to it as a silicon interposer and that is because they're mainly made of silicon. Uh, they can also be made of glass or of organic, organic substrate but uh, we'll be focusing on the silicon interposer today and that's why we refer to it as silicon interposer. So the silicon interposer it's just a silicon layer between the substrate and the dyes as you can see in this picture here. Uh, it'll be this uh, this green layer over here and it's just located underneath all of the dyes in the package. Uh, however, it's more than just a layer there for mechanical support. It also provides a connection between the dyes. As you can see by this line here, uh, it connects the dyes among them, but it can also connect the dyes to the IOs, to the inputs and outputs of the, of the package. Uh, so it can make connections vertically, but also horizontally. And thanks to this, it basically eliminates the need for a wire bond. It's a uh, much denser, much more efficient, shorter connections, uh, overall better than wire bonds. And this is a, one of the stepping stones for uh, 2.5 and 3D technology. Uh, this really enabled those technologies to occur. Um, so it does that thanks to the through silicon vias, and we'll talk a little bit more uh, later on about the through silicon vias, but basically you can think of them as uh, just copper pathways uh, that cross the silicon and they just make the interconnections um, and that's the that's the technology that allowed all of this to to happen now the interposer can be active or it can be passive and we'll also talk about that in a second and uh, like we talked in the previous video the foundries are the ones that deal with all the silicon you know they're the ones that make the wafers so it's no surprise that they're also the ones that make the the silicon interposer. Now TSMC has been the main supplier of uh, interposers but other foundries like Global Foundries uh, are also getting into the market uh, so we should ha we should see a, a big market for interposers in the coming future. Now why do we need a silicon interposer? You know like you you might be thinking okay that's great but but why do we need it? Uh, and basically with newer chips like I said, 2.5D, 3D, or chips with just much higher density of uh, interconnections, uh, conventional substrate just could not support that amount of uh, of pins. Uh, basically, the wire bonds could not uh, deal with that, and uh, the the silicon interposer for the first time allowed a much higher density of interconnections, and that just follows Moore's law. You know, uh, the chip makers want to make chips with more connections in a tighter space, and uh, the silicon interposer was the way to enable that. Now, uh, it's been tested for over 20 years, so it's not necessarily a new technology. Uh, AT&T and IBM worked on it in the 80s, but uh, back then it didn't really uh, become popular at all. And that's because they had some other laminate substrates that were less dense, but they were had much lower costs. Uh, so at that point, they didn't really need that high density, and uh, you know the cost was just not worth it. However, with um, you know some more modern technology and uh, and uh, more time and the market demanding these type of chips with much higher density uh, the popularity of the interposer has gone up it's resurfaced and now it seems to be a key technology in packaging in one of the first devices that uh, used uh, silicon interposes was this uh, Silinx Vertex 7 2000T and this was an FPGA device and uh, you can see here the insides that it uses a silicon interposer to connect the dies. Um, so what are the advantages? We've mentioned some of them but let's go more in depth. Uh, first of all we have a high wiring density because you don't need the wires to be hanging around. You can have a much more dense. Um, we also have a coefficient of thermal expansion matched to the silicon die. Uh, the interposer and the die are both made of silicon which means they have the same coefficient of thermal expansion, so uh, that makes sure that there shouldn't be any disconnections between there. 
We also have an excellent electrical and thermal performance for a lower power, and this comes with uh, increased bandwidth, uh, you know, less power usage, and, uh, just better performance overall, and this is due to shorter interconnections between the chip and the substrate. And as you can see in this diagram to the right, for traditional packaging types, uh, the signal would have to go all the way through the lead and then through the wire bond into the chip. Um, for the uh, devices that use the silicon interposer, it can go straight up and then it goes a little bit horizontally depending on what chip it needs to go to, but the distance is overall much smaller and you don't have any wire, any loose wires around, um, overall much more efficient. So it also, you know, shorter wires also mean less resistance, which are less losses, so it's more power efficient um, and overall just much better in terms of performance. Uh, we also have a lower cost of the active devices because it can partition a large die. And finally, we also have the possibility of integrating passive devices into the substrate. Uh, like we talked in the previous video, uh, System on Package sometimes is trying to include, include some uh, of the devices into the package substrate, and the interposer can do that. And also, we'll see later on how active interposers can have active components inside. But let's start. Let's start from the basic. Let's start from the simplest one, which is the passive interposer. Uh, so, what does a passive interposer do? Uh, it acts as an interconnection between the dice, uh, and also mechanically, it holds all of the dice together. You'll see that all the dice will be on top of the interposer. Uh, it's like another mechanical layer that holds it all together. But it also provides communication, like we said, among the dice themselves, thanks to the top layer, which. You can see the top layer is the one that goes horizontally and we'll focus on it in a little bit. But also vertically thanks to the through silicon vias and it connects those to the inputs and outputs of the of the chip. The passive interposer has no active devices, uh, just, just connections and therefore it cannot perform any functions uh, other than, you know, connecting the chips to one another. Uh, the good thing about the passive interposer and the advantage it has over the active interposer is that it has a higher wiring density and this is due to the fact that um, you don't have any devices in the in the silicon substrate to uh, block the path of the TSV or you don't have to work around anything. It's all free real estate for you to have interconnections. Now how about the active interposer? Uh, the active interposer also acts as an interconnection uh, among the chips and from the chips to the package inputs and outputs. So the same thing, it can be vertically and it can be horizontally. Um, however, the active interposer has fully functional chips embedded in the silicon, like you can see in this uh, image to the right. You can have things like a, a test uh, clock sensors here, you can have some components added. Um, however, we do have a lower density of through silicon vias, and this is due to a concept they call the keep out zone. Now the keep out zone is an area of about 20 microns or so around the through silicon vias where you cannot place any active component because the stress generated by the different thermal expansion coefficient of the copper and the silicon uh, may damage chips if they're too close to the through silicon vias. So we try to stay away from those, but you know, as a disadvantage because of that, then you have a lot of space that you cannot use and your density will be lower. Um, so we've mentioned some of these concepts, but let's look at the structure of the interposer. We have three main components that we're going to focus on. The first one is the through silicon vias or TSV. Uh, and the through silicon vias are these yellow bars that connect vertically uh, uh, and it just cro goes across the silicon interposer. We also have the RDL or the redistribution layer, which is the very top layer of the interposer, and it's the one that makes the connections vertically, and uh, I mean horizontally. Um, and they will not only connect the chips to one another, but also to the TSVs as needed. And finally, we have the UBM or underbum metallization, which will connect solder bumps to the TSVs. Uh, both from the package substrate and also from the from the chips. Uh, so let's look at them a little bit more in depth. First of all, the TSV through silicon vias. It's just a vertical pathway through the silicon interposer. Uh, you can see here, there's not you know that much to it. Uh, it has a very high aspect ratio. They can be under 20 micrometers wide, and they can be up to 200 micrometers tall. So it's about 10 times as tall as it is wide. Um, maybe even a little bit more. 
And uh, a key thing about the the silicon interposer is that it needs to have a an angle of 90 degrees or less because uh, we'll see later that the copper is filled. So, you know, in order to not have any bubbles or anything inside, the angle will have to be a little bit um, slanted so that there's no no parts that are, weren't filled. So usually they'll be a little bit thinner at the bottom than they are at the top. Now, how, how did they make the TSVs? Uh, they go through a couple, pro like a simple process where they start by etching the silicon interposer and they, making a ho they make a hole and then they let the silicon oxidate to create an isolator layer and this isolator layer will prevent the current going through the TSV to leak onto the silicon. We also have some depositioning where they put some uh, material to prevent diffusion between the copper and the oxide to basically prevent the isolation layer uh, from mixing up and to keep it um, to keep it you know like new and uh, then we have the filling of the copper where they pour the copper onto the TSV and finally we have some polishing some CMP chemical metal polishing where they get rid of the excess copper and they also reveal the other side of the TSV um, by uh, polishing the other side of the the back side of the interposer um, and obviously like I said uh, there is a keep out zone uh, for the active interposer so when you're making your design you have to be very aware of that um, when you're doing your TSVs. Uh, let's also take a look at the redistribution layer. Um, like I mentioned the redistribution layer is all about horizontal connections. Uh, it's the very top layer of the very top layers of the interposer and like you can see here they just make horizontal connections between the dies but also they make horizontal connections between the you know between the pins and the TSV. So imagine there's a signal that's coming up through this TSV but it needs to go to this pin over here so the redistribution layer is the one that reroutes and that's the key concept they reroute the signals to where they need to be and the way they make this is they get a silicon oxide layer um, that they etch just like they do with the with the TSVs but they etch it horizontally and then they let another silicon oxide layer on top of it and then they do as many layers as they need to create the necessary interconnections Finally, let's take a quick look at the under bump metallization. Uh, so a UBM is just a thin pad that connects the solder bump to the copper in the RDL or in the packet substrate. And uh, you know the RDL is just a, a small interconnection, and the solder bump is uh, a lot bigger in comparison. So the UBM serves as an interconnection between those two, and it also prevents diffusion between the solder bump and the and the copper. Um, as well as provide mechanical support uh, making a connection and usually uh, these these UBMs are made of uh, nickel so now we know a lot about the interposer but uh, let's take a, a little bit more of a look into the supply chain so like we mentioned earlier they're mainly made in the foundries you know they're the ones that make the vias and uh, they make the front side but then there's two possible ways they can be finished they can either continue at the foundry or the IDM and they can do uh, wafer support, thinning, backside bump, debonding, and shipping, or they can send them to the OSATs, and the OSATs can do those final steps um, for them. And um, we can see here in this graph to the left a little bit which companies do each of the processes. So some of the bigger companies are uh, TSMC or Global Foundries, which do the TSV, RDL, and the bumping. Uh, we also have other technologies like Amcor Technologies, which doesn't do the TSV but it does RDL bumping, packaging, and testing. And some of the IDMs, like Samsung, Texas Instruments, Sony, Toshiba, IBM, they can do all of it. Um, so that's a little bit, a little look into the supply chain for the TSVs. So quick summary, uh, what did we learn? We learned that the interposer is a layer that connects the dies. Uh, it's located between the dies and the package substrate, and it connects the dies to each other and to the inputs and outputs. Like we can see here, it gets rid of all the uh, wire bonds. It can manage to get things a lot closer together thanks to the redistribution layer and the high wiring density. Some of the biggest advantages are, again, high wiring density. We have a, a thermal coefficient, uh, exp thermal expansion coefficient matched between the silicon die and the and the silicon interposer. We have excellent electrical and thermal performance. Uh, we have lower cost of active devices.
uh, and lower power requirements. And then we can positively integrate passive devices into the substrate. Uh, as for the different structure and the different types of interposer, we can have the passive interposer and the active interposer. The passive interposer has uh, the TSV that goes up vertically, the redistribution layer which goes horizontally at the top of the um, interposer. We have the UBMs under metallization, under bump metallization that will connect the redistribution layer to the bumps and then we can have the chips on top of the interposer. For the active interposer, all of that still works but we also have some active components embedded into the interposer uh, which will eventually, due to the keep out zone, make the TSV density lower. So uh, that's that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, uh, be on the lookout for the following video that we'll be making and uh, have a great day. Bye bye.